My guest today is Father Donald Calloway. Father Calloway is the author of Consecration of St. Joseph, The Wonders of Our Spiritual Father. Father Calloway holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from Franciscan University in Steubenville. He holds a Master of Divinity from the Dominican House of Studies in Washington, D.C. He holds also a Bachelor of Sacred Theology from the Dominican House of Studies, and he holds a Leishnet of Sacred Theology from the International Marian Research Institute in Dayton, Ohio. Father, great to have you on the show. Father Callaway, it's great to have you on the show. Oh, thanks, my friend. Yeah, good to be with you. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, we're going to talk about your book, Consecration to St. Joseph, and we're going to talk a little bit about how you became Catholic and became a Catholic priest. Wonderful. No, I look forward to sharing all those topics. It's, uh, yeah, God has been good to me, brother. Absolutely. What a lot of people don't know is that St. Joseph is the patron saint of the regular Catholic Guy Show. So if you go onto the website, you'll see pictures of St. Joseph on there. And occasionally I do add some in, uh, in the book, in the back of uh, Father's book, he actually has some artwork there that was, it's commissioned artwork. Father, tell me, how did you become Catholic? <laughs> well, it was the last thing that I ever thought would happen, that's for sure. Um, uh -huh. I, I wasn't raised, you know, in a Catholic home, and my parents were not Catholic. But um, I lived a very tumultuous and immoral upbringing, which ultimately, after having been in rehabilitation centers, jail, kicked out of a foreign country, I mean, my, my life was a disaster. But um, my parents had a conversion to Catholicism. And I joke around with my mother. I say, Mama, I'm, I'm the reason you found God. <laughs> I, <can't, laughs> I drove you so nuts, you needed divine help. Um, so they had a huge conversion and I resisted, I, I resisted. But then, you know, a few years down the road, um, I ended up getting what I call the divine two by four, where I fell in love with the truth because I'd been running away from it my whole life. and. And um, yeah, so I, I ended up becoming Catholic myself and then didn't know what to do with the rest of my life. And so I was praying about that. And that's when um, I discerned that God was calling me to be a priest. I didn't think that was possible because of my litany of past indiscretions. But um, yeah, it, it did happen. It took me 10 years. I had to study for 10 years, uh, which is not normal. It usually takes about six years, but I, I had to make up for a lot of lost time and, and messed up life. And so now I've been a priest for 18 years. And um, yeah, I never saw it coming to, to wear one of these around my neck. You know, it's just, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's an amazing story. Um, kicked out of countries, put in jail. Sounds like you had quite the childhood. Yeah, um, I, I think it'd probably be a good movie, to be honest. I, you know, start, start off with an action scene of me running from the, the police in Japan and, you know, go from there. I think I've even got the music for it. I've thought it out, you know, the, the theme track. <laughs> Father, this is a great book that you wrote. And I, I know a lot of people across North America that I've talked to that are doing the consecration of St. Joseph. And I find it quite ironic. You must have a direct line to the Pope. <laughs> well, I, I got to be honest, I kind of feel like the Pope is my agent right now because I wrote this book before he declared the year of St. Joseph. And so as soon as he did that, the sales and interest went off the charts, out of the roof. I mean, and it's it hasn't stopped. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I feel like I should be paying the Pope royalties or something for, for every <laughs> book sold. <laughs> I thought maybe you had this premonition that the Pope's going to call this year the year of St. Joseph, and so let's do a consecration book. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a little truth in that, because what happened was um, I was putting the book together, and then in, in my research, I, I, I realized that we've never had a year of St. Joseph in, in mm -hmm. the whole history of the church. So I actually did write a letter to the Pope in 2019 um, asking him to do this. So, and, and I know he got the letter because we have pictures of him being handed the letter by a bishop and everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, 
I'm sure he gets bombarded with similar requests, you know, Holy Father, you know, meet with me for tea in London or whatever, you know. So um, I thought, nah, somebody will, I'll get a nice letter back from a secretary or something. But uh-huh. lo and behold, a year later, he did it. So wow. I'm not saying I'm responsible for this, but I don't know. <laughs> it was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's right. Father, what inspired you to write the book? Well, you know, kind of, I guess, my own situation of where I came from. Mm -hmm. You know, I had three fathers, actually, before I was 10 years old. You know, it was a it was a messed up childhood. Um, And, you know, the effects of that were really bad for me because I didn't know what it meant to be a man and, and, and to be masculine. I was very confused and I was just basically live in the model that the world shows you. Right. And so mm-hmm. I was really hurting a lot of people hurting myself. And well, you know, after all that, my conversion, I needed St. Joseph myself to learn what it meant to be a good man, a sacrificial man, a humble man, um, all those things. And he's helped me tremendously. Well, about four years ago, um, so many people were coming up to me on a daily basis. I kid you not saying, Father, you know, my husband is cheating on me or my marriage is about to fall apart. My children don't go to church anymore. Um, And then I heard statistics like Mm -hmm. more than half of all marriages today end in divorce. Uh, One fourth of all children, 25 percent of children today do not grow up with a father in their home. And I thought to myself, you know what? Not only me, the whole world needs like a good father right now. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, who's better than St. Joseph? I think it's about time that we introduce him in a way that we've never done before to everybody, you know, the church, humanity, everybody. And um, yeah, I did the research, put the book together. And uh, now, yeah, it's gone global. It's, it's, it's everywhere. How many languages is the book in now? So right now um, at the time of this talk, it's in Uh two, but it's being translated into 13 others as we speak. So wow. in about one month, it'll be available in 15 languages. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Father, question on the book. Why is it 33 days of preparation? Yeah, so um, that's a great question. Uh, a lot of people have asked me that. Mm-hmm. Well, when I thought about doing this, I didn't know how or how to structure it. So I know that St. Louis de Montfort, this really great saint from France a couple centuries ago, came up with a method of consecration to Mary Mm -hmm. that was 33 days. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I don't have to reinvent the wheel here. I mean, that's a really good time frame because if it's only, let's say, nine days, that's good, but you're not really going to be able to go deep. It's going to be over before you know it. If it's 90 days, people are going to kill me. They're going to be like, what are you doing to me here? (laughs) You know, Uh, so... A month to 33 days, you know, more or less, um, Mm -hmm. is a good time when you can really unpack a lot about the topic. So St. Joseph, and you know, it it's not too short, it's not too long. And Mm -hmm. most people are think who have done it and are doing it, they like it because it's something to look forward to every day for for a period of 33 days. Mm -hmm. And why did you do the format that you did? Yeah. So that was an issue. I struggled for several months, like three months of knowing how to put all the information that I had together. So it wasn't just me throwing it on a page, but that it made sense. It flowed. Mm -hmm. And St. Louis de Montfort and his 33 day consecration to Mary, you know, he had the advantage of working from a lot of more stuff when it comes to the Blessed Virgin Mary, whether doctrine or dogmas or whatever. I didn't have all that with St. Joseph because we don't have. There's like volumes in the Bible. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I got like nothing to work with here, basically no words anyway. So I've just got his actions and I've got, you know, what saints have said, popes have said, maybe apparitions he's appeared in, religious communities dedicated to him, shrines. But then I thought, how do I structure it though? You know, that's just loose information. How do I? Mm -hmm. So one day I was praying the litany of St. Joseph. Okay. And I love that prayer. And I started to count the titles and I was like, oh my goodness, it's almost 33. I thought, if I have an introduction, go through every title of the litany, unpack it and add in all the stuff I have. Um, and then a conclusion, boom, there it is. And so that that's how it came together. Yeah. Wow. Father, is it better to do it individually or in a group? I know in the book, you have a whole section on how to do this with a group, but can you do yeah. it individually? Yeah, you can. Um, and I don't think there's any one particular better way to do it. 
Um, I think if you're a family, it is nice to do it as a family, but sometimes it, maybe if there are younger children, um, it could be a little challenging because sometimes it's, it's not deep theology. You don't have to have a doctorate to do this. You know, it's, it's simple. But, you know, for young children that are, it's hard for them to stay stable and stay focused and, and things like that. Well, maybe you can modify it, you know, for a family setting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, every, people are doing it. I've, individuals are doing it. Spouses are doing it. Families are doing it. Parishes are doing it. I mean, the whole format is in the back of the book. So, um, yeah, you can do it anyway. I've heard of whole religious communities doing it. Yeah, me too. I've actually, a whole seminary is currently doing it. So I'm just like, awesome. it is, yeah. In the book, you have some different sections too. Like I mentioned, you have the section there that goes into how to do it with a group. You also have prayers to St. Joseph that are out there. And some of those I'd never seen before. Mm. Where did you find all of them? Yeah, it took a lot of research. And actually, you know, thank the Lord that I was gathering this information before COVID because, you know, now you can't travel like I was. I was traveling the world internationally for three years, gathering all this information. And I was having people translate things for me from like Maltese, from Polish, from Croatian, um, around the world. And so a lot of the prayers in there uh, have never appeared in English before. And, mm -hmm. um, and then I composed some myself that, you know, I had to get special permission to do because if they're going to be prayed in group settings or in public, you have to get what's called an imprimatur from your bishop. And that's specifically from the bishop where you live. So I live in Steubenville, Ohio. So I had to get the imprimatur from the bishop. And that takes time. It doesn't just happen overnight. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did get it. And so those prayers, even the, the ones I composed, can be prayed in a group setting now. So that's, that's a blessing. And the book has an imprimatur too. Yeah, no, exactly. Right. So yeah, all that stuff is very important, I think, because instead of people just thinking, well, this is just Father Calloway saying this stuff and, you know, eh, okay, I got my opinion for sure, but mm -hmm. it's not a weird opinion. You know, the church says, okay, this is okay to believe, you know, what is put in this book with that seal stamp of approval uh, from a bishop. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Father, when's the best time to do the consecration to St. Joseph? I mean, there's any time you can do it, but I do have at the beginning of the book and on the website, uh, people can see a chart that's mm -hmm. suggested, you know, it, it's just easy to see. So if you want to end it, for example, on the solemnity of St. Joseph, uh, March 29th, you would start it on February 15th, just 33 days, you back up. Mm -hmm. March 1st, you started on, or May 1st, you started on March 30th. And mm -hmm. I've got all those kind of dates uh, feast days associated with St. Joseph, like the Holy Family, um, Our Lady of uh, Fatima, because St. Joseph appeared at Fatima, Our Lady of Knock, because St. Joseph appeared at Knock in that apparition, and several others that just make it convenient. But you can do it anytime. And I've heard interesting people doing it, for example, uh, couples, so that it ends on their wedding anniversary, oh, for that's example. That's pretty awesome. Isn't that lovely? I think that's yeah. brilliant. I think that's a great way to renew your marriage and give and trust yourself to St. Joseph. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And trust your marriage to St. Joseph. Yeah. And the Holy Family, for that matter. Mm -hmm. Yep. Where's the best place to get the book, Father? Oh, you know, this is a, it's a big issue right now because every time I go online, Amazon is like sold out constantly because it's, it's, it's crazy how popular mm -hmm. it is. So they, they get it in stock about every week. Um, so that's worldwide because a lot of people... The shipping doesn't go from the United States when you order it from the website that I'm about to tell you, but Amazon, you can get it worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a website that's just for the book um, and everything associated with it, where you can get artwork, that commissioned artwork you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. We have the ebook, we have the audio book, the Spanish book, the Spanish ebook, and soon we'll have the Spanish audio book. That website is consecration to stjoseph.org. And you don't spell out the saint, it's just ST. So like the title of the book, Consecration to St. Joseph, it's just consecration to stjoseph.org. Super simple. And we'll put that in the show notes too. Awesome. Father, if people want to learn more about you and the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception, where do they go? Yeah, so I'm the vocation director for our community and we're doing really great with vocations. It's I mean, we're kind of spoiled, to be honest with you. Um, 
we have 31 seminarians right now um, and they're great guys. And, and we've had so many ordinations, you know, recently, it's just, it's amazing. So if you want to find out more about uh, my, what I do in particular, but also about the community and our vocations, go to fathercalloway.com. And that one you do spell out father. So it's <laughs> Father Calloway. I know confusing everybody here. Fathercalloway.com. You'll find out, you know, all that. And the other books that I've written as well. They're they're on that website. Yeah. And as I mentioned in the intro, you have 13 other books. Those 13 other books, they all most of them are Marian centered uh, centered, if not all of them. Yeah. How did you go from that to now a book on St. Joseph? That is an interesting thing. Um because I, I mean, I love our lady so much and she brought me to Jesus and without her, I mean, I'm, I'm a wreck. Um, so in my prayer, you know, it was, I was saying to myself, um, you know, we really need to bring in St. Joseph into our devotional life because we need to close the gap in this time of a crisis in families and in marriages. Mm -hmm. Well, let's not leave out the father like the world is doing. I mean, the world wants to just push fathers to the side and say that they're not important or significant and we don't even need them. Well, let's not do the same thing in our devotional pious lives. Let's bring in St. Joseph. And I thought to myself, I think that our Lord and our lady um, would very much want this and delight in this. And I almost felt, I really did, that it was Jesus and Mary kind of pushing me to, you know, okay, do it. <laughs> you know, we're, we're behind you. Okay, we got you. Yes, let him be known and loved. Um, his time has come. So that's that's kind of why. Awesome. Father, what's your hobby? Your favorite hobby? <laughs> well, surfing, definitely. Um, don't get to do it as much as I would like because, you know, I, I live in Ohio and yeah, I travel I constantly. Steubenville, you have a, a big yeah. ocean there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you, you really don't want to get in the Ohio River. That thing is pretty nasty. <laughs> um, so... You can surf uh, 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 Lake Erie, right? Maybe a week out of the year or something like that. But um, yeah, so I, I get to do it when I can, when I'm in places like California or Florida or other places. Um, but I love it. I mean, I really do. Yeah. Awesome. What else would you like to share with the regular Catholic guys out there, Father? Yeah, I mean, I just want to encourage you to... to take up this challenge of getting to know St. Joseph and, and, and consecrating yourself to him. You know, St. Teresa of Avila, who is a great devotee of St. Joseph in the 16th century, she challenged people to a test. She said, I've never seen, you know, um, him not come through when I've gone to him. So she said, and so, you know, I challenge you to, to a test, to, to, to try it for yourself. And so I, I echo what she said, because it's true. St. Joseph is, He's the neglected saint. He's the guy in the background, the best supporting actor of Christianity, and he's kind of ignored. Well, let's go to him right now. And so I challenge you to get a copy of the book and to do this program. I, I think you'll really like it. And I think you'll uh, really come to know and love St. Joseph. Uh, I challenge all the men out there to do this as well, along with Father's Challenge. So you got a double challenge because this will make a change in your life and it there's no better role model for a father, a parent, or a man than St. Joseph. Amen. Thank you, Father. You're very welcome, my friend. God bless you. God bless you.